All right, method one was quadrants. Method two was the unit circle. Method three is graphing. Now, in all my time teaching the year 11 12 courses, what I find is people hate graphing. Uh, people say to me, graphing takes so long. Um, graphing is hard. And these kind of fit together because it takes a long time because you don't practice it. And that's why you find it hard, because you don't practice it. Right? Uh, my solution is, don't go away from something which clearly you're going to have to be good at anyway. If you're going to have to develop this skill, you might as well dig your heels in, develop it, and then it will become useful to you in lots of other ways, like this one. So, at some point last year, you would have been introduced to what the sine graph looks like, and I want to show it to you again. I'm not going to draw the whole sine graph, which waves up and down forever. I'm just going to draw the part from 0 to 360, because that's the part they're interested in. Okay, so it looks like this. Okay, a uh, couple of things to point out while we're just looking at this graph. Number one, it is smooth. Number two, it has these spots where it sort of curves around gently. Do you notice that? Those are not um, sharp points. They are gentle curves, just like a parabola. Okay. Uh, lastly, you'll notice that even though it kind of looks like two halves, one up and one down, those are not semicircles. They're not semicircles. Um, if you draw something that looks like this, it is not the sine curve. It might look nice, but it's not the sine curve. And when we go on later to learn about calculus and differentiation, you'll realize why this is so critically mistaken. Okay? But essentially what that means is, see the um, points where it cuts the axis? See those intercepts? Have a look at the gradient there. Um, see how it's like at an angle here? Then it's at an angle there and it's at an angle there. It's not straight up and down. Okay. So this is what y equals sine x looks like. I'm just going to label that as such. <coughs> y equals sine x. You've got some intercepts. I went from 0 to 360, which makes that spot in the middle 180. 180. Okay. Which, by the way, if you remember, have a look at the unit circle again. Where is theta equals 180 on the unit circle? Can you describe where it is? You start from the positive x-axis, and then you start turning, and you start turning, and then there's 180. Do you agree? So therefore, this is the point. Do you see why, if you look at this guy, why sine 180 is 0? What's sine about? It's about the y-coordinate. What's the up and down of this point? Answer, 0. Right? And that also tells you why sine 360 is also zero. Because look where sine 360 is. It's going to be way back at the start. Where are you up and down? Answer, zero. All right, so that's what the graph looks like. <coughs> now, if you're asking this, sine theta equals a half, what you're really asking is, when does that graph intersect with this one? So just like before, I'm going to draw y equals a half on here. Now, think for a moment. What's the highest sine goes? What's this value up here? It's 1, isn't it? By the way, come back to the unit circle. Why is the highest that it gets 1? Because the radius of the unit circle is 1. The highest I have on the diagram is this spot. <coughs> and the y coordinate is 1. Which is also why the lowest that you get is negative 1, because it's down here. Right? Does that make sense? Okay. So I've got some scale in here, I know the amplitude. So that means, where is y equals a half? Well, it's halfway up, isn't it? Here's a half. Do you agree with that roughly? Okay. So get your ruler out and draw a line that goes all the way across, like that. Now just like with the unit circle, essentially what you are doing now is solving simultaneous equations. I have given you this equation Let's call that guy equation 1. And then I've given you this equation, and I'm going to call him equation 2. Right? Uh, I've just drawn them. y equals a, a half is the green line, and y equals sine x is the black line. So if you got given two pairs of, well, one pair of simultaneous equations, and they look like that, you'd solve by substitution, wouldn't you? 
you'd substitute y into one or the other, and then you'd write this. That's what it looks like, doesn't it? So I'm looking for points of intersection. How many are there? Two, which you'd hope that we know by now. Okay, and where are they? They're here and here. Okay. Now again, what I love about this is you don't even have to think about quadrants, right? Look where the solutions are. Do you see one of them is an acute angle between naught and 90? And the other one is going to be an obtuse angle between 90 and 180. But you didn't have to memorize some arbitrary ASTC thing. The graph just does the work for you, right? Okay, then you say, well, where are these two spots? Here and here. Okay. Um, again, you can use your calculator if you cannot remember your exact values. That your first solution, sure enough, is going to be. Do you see it? Thirty degrees, right there. In fact, if you draw yourself a decent sine graph, it's actually quite easy to read that off. Do you see that? You see here to here is naught to ninety. That's about a third. Do you agree? Okay. So thirty degrees. There's my first solution. Now again, look at the symmetry of the graph. Hey sir, do are you after me or are you... Do you want to go up to my class? Um, no, uh, what I'm going to do is I'll give you the list and then we'll, we'll bring it into effect on Monday. Monday, okay. Okay. see you later. Thanks. Okay, look, look closely, look closely. Do you notice the sine curve has all this wonderful, beautiful symmetry to it, right? The reason it has so much symmetry to it is that the unit circle has so much symmetry to it. And these two things are integrally connected. Okay. In particular, <coughs> just for a second, forget about this part of the graph. Just look at what's left. Okay. Um, I, I erased that bottom part because I know it won't give me any solutions. Right? Why do I know it's not going to give me any solutions? Never, never intersects, right? Sine theta has to be positive, so I'm above. Only the parts above. Are you with me? Now just look at that, you see how that's symmetrical? That's a symmetrical object. So if I got this solution, the first one, by going 30 degrees that way, how do I get the second solution? By going 30 degrees the other way. That's why it's 180 degrees minus theta, because you're starting from here and going to the left. Do you agree? You see, this is why. I mean, you can memorize this again. You can memorize the machinery without knowing why it works. The reason why it works is because of this picture. Okay. So therefore, from the graph, my solutions are, and I don't really need to say anything else apart from, I mean, here, really. That's the wonderful thing about method two and method three. They pretty much cut out all of this, hmm, up my around, random rules for reasons that no one really knows. No one knew why ASTC was the what it was when I asked you a week ago. Um, and it just says, look, the picture speaks for itself. Sine theta is the y coordinate. It's a half. Or sine, oops, sorry, sine theta. Um, sine theta is this graph. When's it hit y equals a half? Answer, there and there. And that's your solution. I would, in fact, say from the graph. Oh, right. And then you get your solutions. 